What are we going to do about our daughter's care? When I announced my pregnancy, my husband's sister yelled at me in a loud voice. At that moment, seeing my husband's stern face, I thought, surely he'll stand up for me. But, give up on the child and get an abortion now. With those words, my hopes were easily betrayed. I never imagined that not only my sister-in-law, but also my own husband would say such awful things to me. I was so shocked that I couldn't stop crying. All right, I give up. With a trembling voice, that's all I could manage to say. I'm Paige. I'm 30 years old and have been married for two years. My husband, Derek, is a company employee whom I met through a friend. Even before marriage, he occasionally arrived late for dates due to work, which seemed to be extremely demanding. Wanting to support my husband, I resigned from my job when we got married. After marriage, I found happiness in small things, like going shopping on weekends or cooking together. Derek's parents have passed away, leaving him with his sister Maria and her three-year-old daughter Rosie. After Maria divorced a year ago, she moved to our neighborhood with Rosie. Since then, Maria started coming to our house every weekday, leaving Rosie with me from noon until late at night, saying, It's cramped with the child around. Then late at night, when Rosie, who cries for her mom, finally falls asleep, Maria returns, waking her up roughly. I love children, and Rosie is adorable, but it breaks my heart to see her cry every night for her mom. One day, I mentioned this to Maria when she came to pick up Rosie, but she just shrugged it off, refusing to listen properly. Reluctantly, I asked Derek to speak to Maria about it. Why? You're a housewife, so you should be able to take care of Rosie. But Maria is her mother. Isn't it strange that she leaves Rosie with me every day? Don't act so high and mighty when you can't even have a child. Derek yelled and then went to his room without looking at me. Why do I have to be yelled at for just telling the truth? I took a deep breath to calm myself and suppress my irritation towards Derek. It's not just my fault that we don't have children. I've told Derek several times that I want a child, but he always evades the topic. Additionally, Maria began to leave Rosie with me for babysitting, not only on weekdays, but also on weekends. She even started going out with Derek when he had a day off. Reaching my limit, I suggested we could all go to the park together so Rosie could play too, but... Huh? Maria wants to go out just with me, so that's obviously not going to work. Besides, why do we have to adjust everything for a child? I was appalled at Derek, always doing what Maria says. And Rosie, tears in her eyes, chased after Maria, calling, Mom, be quiet. You're supposed to stay home, so go over there. Maria yelled at Rosie loudly, then slammed the front door and left with Derek. I hugged the crying Rosie gently, feeling a pain in my heart. At the same time, I started to feel distrust towards Derek, who selfishly spoke his mind without caring that our time together as a couple was diminishing. Around that time, Feeling unwell for several days, I went to the doctor and discovered I was 12 weeks pregnant. I was overjoyed at the long-awaited pregnancy. I wanted to tell Derek right away, but he said he would be home late, so I looked forward to telling him the next day when he was off. I wonder how Derek will react when he knows I'm pregnant. Just imagining it made me happy and I couldn't help but smile. However, the next morning, while I was prepping breakfast, Maria again dropped off Rosie without notice. I'm taking Derek today, too. Maria, how about from now on, instead of me, you leave Rosie at a child care center? Huh? What's with the attitude? It might be good for Rosie to make friends there, don't you think? No way, unless you're paying for the child care fees, Paige. Maria smirked and started eating breakfast without permission. She always does this, eating without asking. No matter how many times I tell her, she doesn't stop, and I sighed heavily. Good morning. Oh, you're here already, Maria? Hey, there's a sale today. Let's go. Maria, dropping food from her mouth, talked about her plans for the day. Derek seemed eager, so I hurriedly said, Hey, I have something important to tell you. Leave that for later. I'm talking to Maria right now. But it's really important. Huh? Derek looked at me as if to say it was probably nothing important. To him, I smiled and shared the news. Hey, Derek, I'm pregnant. I'm at 12 weeks now. Really? Our long-awaited baby, you're gonna be a father. 
I couldn't hide my broad smile of joy, but Derek just stood there, speechless and stunned. You're kidding, right? I excuse me? In my husband's reaction, I was the one left astonished, as Derek muttered, That's impossible. Suddenly, Maria's expression, which had been cheerful, changed drastically. Wait, are you really planning to have this baby? Of course. I was surprised to be questioned like this by Maria. Then she angrily slammed her hand on the table. Don't be ridiculous. That's not going to work. What about our living expenses? I was confused by her words. Me having a baby has nothing to do with Maria's living expenses. Our living costs will suffer because of your child. Apparently, Maria had been receiving financial support from Derek every month, which was news to me. I never knew about this. It's none of your business. It's my money. I could spend it however I want. What's wrong with helping my sister in need? Derek glared at me, his face red with anger. I was dumbfounded. But as I struggled for words, Maria leaned forward, pressing Derek. Hey, Derek, you'll still give me the 2K per month, right? Of course. What? 2K? And I only get $800? Maria looked at me triumphantly, her face twisted in malice. I felt lost, not understanding Derek's thinking, and collapsed into a chair. Derek then stood in front of me and declared, You're getting an abortion. What are you saying? I can't abandon Maria and Rosie, and Rosie is definitely cuter than any child you could have. It was our long-awaited child. I thought Derek would naturally share in my joy, but he didn't. I never imagined he would so readily accept Maria's unreasonable and selfish demands. My trust and love for him crumbled away in an instant. Tears of anger and sadness overflowed uncontrollably. All right, I give up. I bit my lip involuntarily. Meanwhile, Derek and Maria looked at each other and rejoiced. Keep taking good care of our daughter, okay? Unable to bring myself to respond to Maria's smug smile, I ignored her as Derek and Maria left, as if nothing had happened, leaving Rosie behind. Mom! Rosie cried sadly as usual. Left behind, I had to take care of Maria's child again, despite having to give up my own. As my initial confusion settled, a fierce anger surged within me. I'll never forgive him. Clenching my fists, I resolved to take revenge on Derek. The next day, I decided to check Derek's bank account. Until now, I had no idea how much he earned, as he had told me it wasn't much. So, I had been managing our finances with my savings and income from working at home. I wondered what the point was of supporting a household without complaining, thinking he was working hard. Stunned to see a monthly salary deposit of about 4k, my hands trembled with anger. What is this? Further examining the bank account, I found something concerning and called Derek's company, where I was confronted with another shocking fact. Meanwhile, every time Derek saw me, he would ask, When are you getting the abortion? It pained me to even look at him, knowing he could easily forsake our child's life. And every day, Maria would nonchalantly drop off Rosie. As morning sickness began, my days passed without a moment's rest. Then one day, my mother was coming over in the afternoon. Today's dinner will be anything you like, Rosie, made by my mom. I said this loud enough for Maria to hear when she brought her child over. Yay, I want meatloaf, Rosie joyfully exclaimed. Your mother's coming today. Yes, she said she'd prepare a lot of food since I can't cook with my morning sickness. Really? Maria seemed oddly pleased, probably because she loved my mother's cooking, having praised it before. In the afternoon, my mom arrived and made a lot of food. Rosie happily helped her cook, in a good mood. Lying on the couch, I felt a rare sense of peace. Then, unusually early in the evening, Maria, who typically wouldn't come for Rosie until late at night, arrived just as dinner was ready. Yes, looks delicious! She cheered upon seeing the food on the table and started eating without waiting for anyone else to sit down. Greedy eater Maria acted just as I had anticipated. At 7 p.m., my father stopped by after work, and we started having dinner. Next to Rosie, who was eating nicely, Maria noisily devoured dish after dish, astonishing my mother with her voracious appetite. When Derek came home at 8 p.m., he was surprised to see my parents, but delighted to find his favorite dishes on the table, 
For a while, it seemed like a pleasant family gathering, but as dinner ended, the moment of reckoning arrived. I signaled my mother with a look, and she took Rosie upstairs. Then I confronted Derek, presenting him with his bank account data. What's this about? Your salary isn't 4K. Why do you only give me $800 for expenses? My father sat next to me, frowning and crossing his arms. Derek glanced at Maria, who was still eating on the couch in front of the TV, pretending not to know anything. I've been giving Maria more because she kept saying she was short on money. It's funny how my complaints about being short were always met with accusations of overspending, but you have a different attitude towards your sister. Well, you can handle things yourself, right? You have savings and you're working from home. Derek was shamelessly justifying as if it was natural for me to manage everything. I had refrained from asking for money, believing he was working hard, but to be thought of in such a way was unbearable and I fought back tears of frustration. I can't bear to see my dear sister suffer, but you, you're tough and capable. Yeah, Paige, you and I are different. I'm delicate. Stop blaming Derek. Maria chimed in, and Derek's mood seemed to improve even more. Helping my family's not wrong. My only family is Maria. But I'm your family, too. Huh? A wife isn't really family. Excuse me? I married him, hoping to build a family together, but he clearly didn't share those feelings. A wife should just do household chores like a servant, so get rid of that bothersome child quickly. Stop complaining already. So... I felt an eerie calm, deciding to show no mercy. My father sitting beside me nodded, understanding my resolve. Okay, I understand your feelings, but before we proceed, I have a few things to confirm. Is that alright? I presented Derek with the bank account data again. That's 1500 regularly transferred from your company on no particular day. What is it? Oh, that's... It's compensation the company gave you because I, your wife, had surgery, right? When I had called Derek's company, I was surprised to be asked about the progress of my surgery. I learned that Derek had claimed I had undergone surgery. I never had any surgery. That's strange, isn't it? Well, uh... Derek hesitated briefly before glaring at me and yelling. Shut up. Maria said she couldn't pay for Rosie's childcare, so I need the money. Poor Maria, not getting any child support from her ex-husband. Derek seemed to believe there was nothing wrong with deceiving his company for money. I almost laughed at his red-faced anger. But Rosie isn't even going to a child care center. What? Maria awkwardly turned away at that moment. Derek looked confused. Why do you need child care fees if she's not attending? Derek seemed to sense something off in Maria's behavior. What's going on, Maria? Stop it. Rosie is attending child care. Paige, don't tell such weird lies. Maria desperately denied it, but her eyes darted around in panic. You really don't understand Maria at all, do you? This is practically fraud. Maria, explain yourself. Derek glared at Maria with a blood-drained, terrifying face. I then pulled out something else. Maria's secret social media posts. They included posts like, Got a new Hermes. Dinner with a view with my guy is the best. Uh, this is... Maria stammered, becoming more visibly nervous. Happy to have a brother who's an ATM. <laughs> Never short on cash. Got child support for my ex. Time to buy new shoes. There's a lot more here, isn't there? No, please, just ignore it. Derek's forehead veins bulged with anger, trembling, and Maria let out a small scream. I, somewhat amused, continued reading her posts. Taking my child and parenting allowances to the club. Gonna order Dom Perignon. I wondered if child benefits were meant to be used like this. That's when my father spoke up for the first time. Receiving child benefits while having a partner is fraud. You'll have to return everything you've received. No way, this can't be true. And with your income, it looks like you need to pay taxes too. My father smiled. Actually, my father is a tax officer with a strict no-tolerance policy for fraud. No, I can't. Please, you need to overlook this. You can't be forgiven. If we let you off, everyone else who's dutifully paying their taxes will be outraged. What should I do? Derek, help me! Maria clung to Derek for help, but of course, he pushed her away. Enough. You've been deceiving me all along, Maria. Derek, I didn't mean to. You called me an ATM and mocked me. That was just a joke. I'm sorry. Enough. I won't give you a single cent anymore. We're done. No, please forgive me. 
Amid their quarrel, Derek suddenly apologized to me. I was wrong. We can have the baby. Let's be happy together, the three of us. He reached for my stomach and I instinctively backed away, feeling disgusted. What are you talking about? You don't have to give up the baby. Who said anything about giving up the baby? I'm giving up on our marriage. I handed him the divorce papers I had prepared, already signed by me. Why? I just accepted the child. Why do I need your permission? I'm going to have this baby regardless. Now, please sign this. I presented the divorce agreement again, demanding a 20k compensation, 8k property settlement, and $500 of monthly child support. No, I love you, Paige. My love for you has long faded. It's impossible. Please forgive me. I need you. Nothing you say can change my mind now. Then my father stood up. Enough! My usually soft-spoken father's yell frightened Derek into finally signing the papers. The next day, I promptly filed them at the courthouse. Rosie was taken back by her real father, whom I had already informed about everything. Marie had forcibly taken Rosie for child support, and her ex-husband, furious, hired a lawyer to recover all payments. Derek, caught for false billing and misappropriating company funds, was fired and faced repayment demands. Eventually, both saddled with debts, struggled to find decent work, and rumored to be laboring day and night. Meanwhile, I moved back home and safely delivered a healthy baby boy. Each day is hard for raising a child, but I feel so grateful and happy for becoming a mother.